Well, we got this plain Jane Explorer in the shop today. And don't tell Dave there's nothing wrong with it. Well, why is it here? Well, I'm going to the rockauto.com tab here on accessories. And boy, there's all kinds of accessories for it. So join us today on Tech Garage as we do more for the Explorer. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we got our Explorer up in the air and we're ready to go. What are we doing? What's, what's the code? Well, we have uh, no codes. Okay, is it knocking or what's it doing? Not knocking. Okay. You gonna supercharge it? Ooh, That'd be cool. Good one, good one. We wanna supercharge it? Nah. <laughs> I give up, I have no idea. Well, Dave, we do so much extensive diagnostics here at Tech Garage, you know, and everybody always asks, can we accessorize a vehicle? Hey, we're a show for the people. So this is going to be pretty neat. We're going to transform this Explorer, man. It's going to be great when we get done. Went to rockauto.com, had a whole grill brush guard that went all the way across, and we had a bull bar. The owner, well, she wanted the bull bar. That'll look cool. It'll look really cool. Dave, Aries couldn't have made the installation any easier. You got this kit, I'll walk you right through it, man. Right. Go ahead and take that first piece and put it in there. Okay. No welding, no drilling, no nothing, pretty nice. Second one you're gonna take in long side towards that to kind of hold it in place. Ah, cool. Lock it in there. Voila, just that easy. Simple. You got two places to bolt it now, so we can go ahead and snake it up on in there. Okay. And I think if we just wanna put it on that back one okay. a little bit, just get the nut for now. We can always go back and put the lock washers and everything on, but I think this will give us an opportunity to hold it, kind of leverage it on there. All right. Nice shot there, big guy. Hey, how about right. that? Look at that. All right, so yeah, it's perfect. So now we got this plate. Why do we have this plate? Well, the frame actually steps down, so this is pretty cool. You can take this plate here, use your nut with your lock washer on it, and then what you're going to do with your big bolt is stick it through there and kind of hold that bolt in place. You put it up in there, that bolt will hold it right there. So it doesn't hit you in the head. Hey, <laughs> easy. I know where you're going with that one. Is that what happened to you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. Put it up in there. See if you can get it started. Maybe you can catch yeah. it. If not, I think I come up and around here. Yeah. You can come up to the frame. Made a little indention here in the frame. You can go up there and grab it. All right. Let me move yours for you. Manipulate it. And it takes two people. You know, Dave, I took that front panel off. There's a little air dam down here. I took that off so we can get it right up in there. We yeah. can go back and look at it. Maybe we want to reinstall it, trim it, maybe not. Just depends. There cool. you go, that's simple. Awesome. Now we can just go with our guns and bring it up. Let's do one side at a time. I'll do mine first. Let me bring it up in here just to make sure it's gonna be lined up. Look at that, all right. Straighten out that plate of hair. There we go. Oh, man. Dave, I'm usually uh, pretty hot at engineers, but this one, not so much. <laughs> Man, this thing couldn't have been any easier. Making our job easy, I love it. All right, take the back one off now that it's secure. We'll go back and put our flat washer and then our lock washer up. Right. Lock washer towards the nut. All right. One, two, go back in there. See if we can get it restarted. Yep, no problem. Man. See if I go two for two here and get it wow. on the first try. There we go. Dave, you're over there smoking me, man. This just isn't right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and snug it up. Beautiful. I love it. They're going to be very happy with that. It's very cool. Absolutely. And you know what? It's going to get even better. We got more for the Explorer right after the break. Stick around. Some running boards may be going on this joker. We'll be back with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now we are on the dark side the underside of our Plain Jane Explorer. And John, we're gonna make her look a little prettier with some running boards. Absolutely, and Aries couldn't make it any easier, man. Once again, you can come over here and take a look. We got the bracket up here already, but there was nothing to it. Once again, another bracket that went in the frame. No drilling here, but there are gonna be a couple places we're gonna drill. We got that going, all bolted up. 
You can see there's a hole right here. That's pretty neat too. They give you this little rivet, this crush rivet right here. You're gonna drill a hole, put it in there, collapse that crush rivet, and then you can bolt it up. I mean, it's dirty right now, but they're giving you that extra support. Come to the middle bracket, same thing. Two clamps right here. I could hang on it at this point, but in the center, we'll put that same little rivet in there. Make sure it's secure, leveraged against the frame. Boom, nothing to it. John, what I really like, yeah, you have to drill a few holes, but at least it's just in the pinch weld, so it doesn't make you so squeamish right. about drilling into your car. So we've got all these ready to go, and all we need is a uh, running board. Well, ask and you shall receive. Josh has the running board. John, I think we can get this deal. We'll talk to you later. Now, what do we have going on here, Josh? Man, this is a really nice step from Aries. The reason is because on top, you actually have a weather strip, and that's why we're tilting it back right now. We need this weather strip to go underneath the door. That way, when you wash your car or when it rains, you don't have to worry about it getting on the carpet inside your floor. That is a nice touch. But then also, what's nice about it is these bolts come pre-installed. Yeah. You can just slide them back and forth and put them right there in the bracket. And then all we have left, is the rest of the hardware with the flat washers, lock washers, uh, and the nuts. Outstanding. We shore up these brackets just to tighten everything down. It's as simple as that, John. We're making great progress on our Explorer, and Dave's going to make it back to the trailer hitch in the rear in a little while. But before he does that, let's take a look at these wiring harnesses and this trailer plugs because they're all pretty universal and they're pretty simple. You can see I got one plugged into a board right here. So what you would do is go to the back of your vehicle, find the harness that goes back to your taillights, and then we can trace down what circuit does what. And it's pretty simple. I'm just going to turn on the right turn signals there. And on the harness, that's universally usually a green wire, so you'd come to your vehicle, find Find the one, wire into that, then come back over to your connector and check it. You can see it blinking right there. So that's our right turn signal. That's the green wire. Go over to the left turn signal. Once again, back to your vehicle. You can actually see it blinking up there. You found the right one, or actually the left one, but you found the right wire. You come over here and then you hit it. Make sure it's wired up good. It's flashing. Wonderful. Then you come over here and you have the brown wire. The brown wire, well, that's the parking light. So you just touch a couple of them under there, bam. There's the one that's lit with the parking lights. Come over, wire it up, and there you have it, constant power. Now your white, that's a ground wire. And your brake lights, well, they're tied into both left and right side wire harnesses. So if I hit the brake switch, you can see it. There it lights up right there, and then over here, it lights up, so you'll be good to go. Take a look at this graphic here. Perhaps you have a six, a seven pin connector. Well, you go down there, the blue one, well, the blue one's actually your trailer control. Then you could have a red or black that's gonna tie into the vehicle's battery, a fused one, and the purple's usually reverse. Now, when you're making wire connections, always do it right. Look at this graphic again. You see the Western Union, the twist type, you got the actual T-type wires, and you got the pigtail. Just make sure you do it right. Use the wire loom, or just go like we did to rockauto.com, get your whole connector, plug it into the T, and you'll be good to go. Matter of fact, Dave's doing it right now. All that's left to do here is to hook our seven pin connector for the trailer hitch up to our Explorer and it goes right into the socket here. You can feel its seat there, so it grabs on and that is permanently attached. We will now put a couple of screws in, tighten those down and that is all there is to it. When we come back, we're gonna be talking master cylinders in our garage ed segment, so do not go anywhere. This is Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Hey, how about a few Tech Garage tidbits? You know, 68% of Americans drive vehicles that are in need of at least one repair. Almost as many say they'd be in trouble if they had to change a flat tire. And half of Americans say a DIY oil change is out of the question. Help keep the American car culture alive. Teach someone about cars and tell them about Tech Garage while you're at it. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, this season, it's been all about the brake system. But at Garage Ed, we're gonna talk about the master cylinder this time. That's the heart of the brake system. And master cylinder uses hydraulics to get the job done. So it makes sense to talk about hydraulics. Take a look at this graphic right here. Here's actually how it works. Let's say, for example, on the left there, we have a piston A. We're gonna call that our master cylinder. We put 200 pounds of force into that master cylinder. And then over on the other side, piston B, well, we'll call that our caliper. 
And what we're going to do there is we're going to multiply the force because it's five square inches of surface area up to 500 pounds. That's how a master cylinder works. I love hydraulics, man. You can put 100 pounds here, string it 500 miles, push the pressure. You're going to get the same pressure on the other end. Pretty cool. I can actually demonstrate it right here. This is neat. So what's going on is I have a, let's say, for example, this is the master cylinder with a small chamber, and then we have a caliper here with a big old chamber. I got a 22 pound weight right here. I know it's hard to believe as easy as I curl it, but yes, it's a 22 pound weight. Here's the deal. I'm going to hold this really, really tight. And when I push on this, this is going to be our master cylinder. The brake fluid, which is in here, is going to travel through to a bigger surface area, and we're going to move this 22 pound weight. Here we go. There we go. Without that moving, we slid that across the table like it was nothing. Principle of hydraulics. How does it work? Well, like I said, got some small chambers in here. Our caliper has the big chambers. Now let's take a look inside the master cylinder. That's where all the magic happens. And inside of the master cylinder, you have two separate chambers. What's going on there? You even have a longitudinally split system, which means both front wheels are on one circuit and both rear wheels are on one circuit. Or you can have a diagonally split system. That means that the front and the left rear, front, right, left, rear together, and the left front, right rear are together on one channel. So there's two separate circuits. Why? If you have a failure, well, you still have half your brakes. That's a good thing. So inside of here, you can actually see right here. You have a primary piston and a secondary piston. And what's going on there is I'm putting fluid inside of these chambers. This is the low pressure side here and the low pressure side here. And when I push on it, this is the high pressure side and the high pressure side. I'm sending out high pressure to those chambers. Now inside of here, you actually have a primary piston, primary seal, and a secondary piston, primary seal. So what's going on? That flares out, holds pressure, and allows it to build pressure. On the other side, you have the secondary seal and the secondary seal. Now the primary piston, secondary seal, that's actually what's going to leak on the floor or leak inside the car if you have a leak or a leak between the booster. So that's a good idea to know that as well. Now our master cylinders, they come in different types pretty much used to this one right here. This is a non-integral master cylinder, which means the reservoir actually pops off with some grommets. You may just get a cylinder body and have to replace the reservoir itself. And then there's the old integral type, man, the big cast iron, that's pretty cool. But no matter what, if you get a master cylinder, you're gonna have to do some bench bleeding. And Dave, I think you got the answers for us. You got it. Well, bench bleeding is an important step once you get the brakes actually on the car. Now we know about bleeding the entire system and uh, that is a lot easier if you start by bench bleeding here at the master cylinder. What you're going to do is throw it into a vise on your bench. Now this kit comes from rockauto.com and it comes with a couple of tubes and it comes with barb fittings and all of these barb fittings you have to check and see which one is going to fit into your master cylinder. They'll have one that works for you. We've already done that here on the back with these barb fittings. Just little nozzles, little adapters for the hoses for, for the kit here. And then you take your two hoses. Actually you want to put brake fluid into the, into the reservoir first. And you take these two hoses and you, you put them in here. And this is where you take a screwdriver. You can use the pointy end or you can use the blunt end of it. And you plunge in and out here and that will pump the fluid up through the, through the tubes here. And once you stop seeing bubbles, uh, that is when you are ready to go. And remember, the master cylinder is the headwater of your entire brake system. So everything else, all brakes at all four corners, that's all downstream from here. So if you can start by eliminating the bubbles at the top of the system, it's going to make it a lot easier to bleed the system down at each of the four corners. Boy, especially with the anti-lock brakes and everything going on in there, and you saw the nooks and crannies inside of that master cylinder. Well, John, that's a really great tech tip when it comes to the ever important master cylinder. And we have more great tech tips coming up next on the MTTT here on Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Can't get enough of Tech Garage? Well, you can see what we're up to during the week by hitting up our Facebook page. You can even drop us a note there to say hello. And you can go online to catch up on past seasons. You can find every single episode of Tech Garage at masterstv.com. Do not go anywhere because Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, will be right back. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by NH Oil Undercoating, the official oil-based rust prevention system. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. 
Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we made it to our segment, MTTT. Say what? That's right, the Master Technician Tech Tip. Say that three times fast. Hey, this time it's all about the shock absorbers, and I got a question for you. You know where most OEM shock absorbers wind up? the junkyard, and that's just not right. You should be changing your shock absorbers around 50,000 miles or wherever your manufacturer states, but they shouldn't be in the junkyard, that's for sure. Let's take a look at them. We'll see what they do and how they work. Well, a shock absorber, it actually controls spring oscillations. That's its job. It doesn't control ride height, the spring does that. How does it do it? Well, there's different shock absorbers. You can see this one here is kind of cut away, which is really cool. You can see down here, this is an air shock. So down here would be an air charge, usually nitrogen or some kind of gas down here, pushing up on this piston, and then fluid would be on this side. So what happens is that air keeps a little pressure there. So number one, it doesn't aerate as you're going, and you can transfer the heat. That's really nice. Now it's a double tube mono shock absorber here, and this valving is the key. The valving allows the fluid to go from one side to the other. If you had big holes in the valve, well, you'd have a squishy ride. If you had little holes in the valve, well, that would happen then, it would tighten up the fluid and then you would have a nice stiff ride. So good look at inside a shock absorber. Now, another type of shock absorber is a McPherson strut. This is a McPherson strut right here. The shock absorber is located on the inside and the coil springs right here on the outside, but still a shock absorber, still the same inspection, still needs to be replaced on its specific mileage. Another thing you can check, and you can see it right here. Up top, this is usually attached to the frame of the vehicle. So what happens when you turn? You actually rotate this plate back and forth. Sometimes you get some squealing, some noise, some rattles. Not a good thing. You want to replace it as a whole unit. Rock Auto offers all these. Also, there's air shocks. Well, this is cool. You can actually take air, inject it in here, and if I inject it in here, you can see the tube actually pop out. When the tube pops out, you're changing ride height, you actually are, and you're increasing some load capacity. Perhaps you want to upgrade to that. Now, on the Magna ride, Magno Rheological ride, <laughs> Dave didn't even think I could say that, that's a big word. GM calls it Magna ride. Now, we saw that last season, that was really cool, where the fluid actually changed viscosity with magnetic induction, and that's pretty cool because they're electric. And when it changed, it changed the viscosity, the thickness of the fluid. So instead of changing the orifice holes, the fluid got thicker, we can change the ride characteristics. As a matter of fact, that new Corvette, man, that suspension system's all about magnetic ride. That employed some sensors here for ride height and a computer and an actual air module to pump up the car. So you could have all different sizes and varieties of shock absorbers. Rock Auto's got us covered. They got them all. Now, I told you before, no place for a pry bar at Tech Garage or Big Hammers. All right, I lied. Pry bar is great when it comes to suspension. Just pull, tug, look, and a visual inspection never hurts. Josh, what'd you find? Well, like you said, I'm doing a visual inspection. This one's looking okay but just want to go over what I've done. What you want to do is you want to look at the shock. Look for any kind of leaks going on. If you have a severe leak, that's not good for your ride. But also, give it a little jerk, give it a twisting motion. If it rattles around, the bushing is shot in your shock. But this one has over 50,000 miles. Looks good, but we're gonna replace it anyway. Yeah, that's a good idea. Rock Auto will hook us up. We'll get that thing riding like it's supposed to ride. Something wrong with this picture though. You got a Challenger Hemi. I got a Leaf. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. A couple other tests you can run. You can do a dry park test. Now, a dry park test is pretty cool. You actually turn the car to the right or to the left, and what's going on there is you're having a buddy look under there, and you're checking for any buckling, any of these bushings, any of the joints, any control arms. With that much weight on the vehicle to the right or the left, it's going to buckle. Last but not least, you can do a simple what's called a jounce test. You come over to the car. On the corner of the car, you push up and down on it. You watch it bounce. So when I push up and down on it, you can see this one's not bouncing very much. If it was bouncing more than about one or two revolutions up and down or bouncing like a baby buggy, it's time to replace the shocks. Well, this has been shocking. <laughs> Get it? Well, even more shocking is Tom and Dave. <laughs> Stupid. Well, John, variety and selection is what rockauto.com is all about. And Tom, especially when it comes to suspension parts, you got all kinds of things to choose from. Right, yeah, if you have an air suspension and that, that's failing, we have replacement parts for that. If you need new air springs, new compressor, new uh, dryer, something else is kind of cool. If you have an air system and you want to replace it with a conventional system, you're just tired of uh, the air system, we have suspension conversion kits that replace the air shocks with a conventional spring and a conventional shock. 
And what if you want to go the other way then? You want to go to the air to the air suspension uh, and maybe you're towing something. Right, yeah, that's what we have right here is you, uh, you take off the conventional shocks, put on air shocks. So you, yeah, you can t tow heavier loads, maybe you prefer the smoother ride of air shocks. How do I find the right suspension for my vehicle? You look under the specific vehicle, like with most of our parts, and just look under suspension, you'll find the replacement air shocks, you'll find uh, suspension conversion kits, you'll find um, add-on air shocks. The thing I love about rockauto.com is you can find the suspension you need if you maybe you want to go towing and if you decide you're going to tow a boat or a trailer or something like that, you can also find all the lights and the hitches and all the, the little parts you need as well. rockauto.com is your one-stop shop for all the parts your car may need. Let's wrap this thing up and kick it back over to John. Wow, it looks great. I don't know what you guys think, but I'll tell you what, we got some classy on the sides. We got a little beefy in the front. Nice transformation, Dave. Hey, classy and beefy, just like me, John. Yeah, give me the classy, <laughs> beefy, eh, not so much, but I'll tell you what, it looks really good. And the cool part was, is we do so many in-depth diagnostics, so many cool codes and different things at Tech Garage. This was pretty simple and it was a do-it-yourself job, man. Anybody can do this. You got it, we've got even more do-it-yourself kind of stuff and a lot of technical stuff on our social media sites, so be sure to check Check us out there. Well, we're out of time for today, folks. So join us next week for more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was ranked recently as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.